So here we are in another solar winds attack, another supply chain attack. This time it's called 3CX and we have over 600,000 customers might be affected. There is a, um, an attack called 3CX. There is a, pro a company called 3CX, which have a, an application called 3CX desktop app. It's a voice over IP company that has been compromised. Their program, their product has been compromised and all the customers that use 3CX desktop app on Windows or even Mac, they have a malware being injected inside this, uh, this program that basically steal credentials, steal browser data and send them to malicious, um, malicious domains. How we can hunt for such attack? And today I'm going to share like a, a basic conversation with you. How we can think about how we can hunt for such attacks, how we can stop this supply chain from happening over and over and over again. We need to really think about hunting. And today I'm going to give my thoughts, could be completely amateurish thoughts, could be professional thoughts, could give you some insights. And that's what I'm planning to do. So there are multiple ways we can detect such attacks. The first thing is, are we profiling the applications, the third party applications we are using? Profiling means Applications, when they get updated, they do not really have a massive change in their behavior. It might be a slight change in their behavior, might be no changes at all, really some vulnerabilities have been fixed, and the application is running the same, accessing the same range of data, uploading the same, um, uploading, downloading the same range of, of data using kind of similar or the same memory structure and specifically libraries being loaded we're going to talk about that and accessing the same domains ips or in the same range if you are seeing that a program has completely changed its behavior that should be something suspicious this is the first thing second thing how much is the upload to download ratio most of the time if we suddenly see a massive upload of data that should be something suspicious. And more importantly, if we are seeing other domains or other IPs being accessed by the same application, that new IPs, new domains, especially unverified domains, newly registered domains, all of these different things should be really suspicious. Each application, is, except the, the browsers, right? All, every application is contacting specific domains and IPs most of the time. They don't really change that. The Slack is updating from Slack, you know, and uh, 3CX is contacting 3CX uh, software and so on, and specific IPs range or specific communication pattern, network pattern. If we see suddenly it's accessing GitHub, which is a legitimate website, and then accessing a list of suspicious domains, which what happened with 3CX, that should be something suspicious. And last thing I want to add to that, which should not be allowed in any legitimate or non-legitimate application, is the what's called reflective dealer loading or reflective dealer injection. To talk about this in a minute, in normal applications, normal, normal Windows applications, they use what's called libraries or Windows libraries or dynamic link libraries, DLL files, uh, like DirectX, OpenGL, maybe uh, FFMPG.dll, which is what's happened in the 3CX. And these libraries, to, for application to load them, it uses the Windows mechanism. There is a Windows standard mechanism to load these libraries from the desk to the memory of the application. The application tell Microsoft, please, I want to load this library, gpg.dll, right? And then the Microsoft will go and load that library. Some and lots of malware, they don't want to use the Windows legitimate way for many reasons. One reason is that they don't want to write their library into desk and windows only load libraries that are saved on desk so they don't want to do that they don't want to have any marks that this library is being loaded in the memory and they basically they simulate what the windows loader gonna do and they do the loading themselves the problem with that loading though is that there is so many red flags in the memory that can tell you that this program is loaded in the memory in the non-correct way it's kind of injected inside the memory and there's so many tools to detect that one of them is um it's called git injected threads uh it's a partial script inside kanza framework i think it's not only kanza but anyway it is inside this kanza framework and you can access it you can use it to scan the whole the whole organization if you want uh, against that uh against this type of memory loading uh, this is only in windows it's not in linux though it's not in mac for sure but that's specifically in windows 
hopefully that is video is helpful let me know in the comments below if you like that video if you see that this is a good idea or you see that it's completely an amateur way and there's already tons of applications do that and that will never detect anything put your comment down below and i will see you in the next video bye bye